In this video, we'll talk about a very high yield topic, and that topic is insulinoma versus exogenous insulin administration. So on your exam, there are a lot of questions that you'll get about patients presenting with hypoglycemia, right? Low blood glucose. And what the question is going to have you do is determine, is this due to something like an insulinoma? Or is this due to somebody giving themselves either insulin or insulin secretagogues? And this gets a little bit confusing because it requires an understanding of normal physiology, pharmacology, and pathology. And you have to have a differential diagnosis between all these three things and also understand how to interpret different labs. So before we go any further, it is a prerequisite that you understand very briefly on a basic level, insulin biosynthesis. So when it comes to insulin production, you start with something called pre-pro-insulin. And I've color coded this to make it as simple as possible. There's a beta chain, which I show here in red, an alpha chain, which I show here in green, and then sort of this connecting piece called C-peptide. And this is what pre-pro-insulin looks like. Now in the first step of insulin biosynthesis, the beta chain, again in red, and the alpha chain, again in green, are connected by disulfide bonds. And I've shown them here in this sort of gold yellow color. Now at this point, you have what's known as pro-insulin. So when you go from pre-pro-insulin to pro-insulin, you're merely establishing disulfide bonds connecting your alpha and beta chains. The C-peptide shown in blue is still there. In the final step where you go from pro-insulin to insulin, the C-peptide is cleaved off and you are left with insulin, which is the beta chain and alpha chain connected with disulfide bonds, and then separately that cleaved off C-peptide fragment. And so just to make this stupidly clear because I'm stupid and I like things simplified, insulin plus C-peptide is the end result of insulin biosynthesis in endogenous insulin production. Now let's contrast that with somebody who injects themselves with insulin. When you inject insulin, right, insulin from a vial of insulin, which is intended for uh, pharmaceutical purposes, all you're injecting is that disulfide bonded alpha beta chain insulin. There's no need to inject the C peptide fragment. That is just a byproduct, again, of endogenous insulin production. So normally in people, for example, who have diabetes type one, they're injecting themselves with insulin, but they're not injecting themselves with insulin plus C peptide because pharmaceutical companies just create insulin. They don't need to also include that byproduct of insulin biosynthesis. So if you understand this physiology and the difference between somebody who takes insulin that is created by pharmaceutical companies in vials and somebody who has a pancreas that's actually doing this endogenously, we can interpret labs differently to work through a differential. So now let's turn our attention to what will show up on USMLE and COMLEX. The highest yield causes of hypoglycemia that you will have to differentiate on your exam are the three things that you see here. Number one, insulinoma. Number two, factitious disorder due to exogenous insulin injections. So that is somebody who takes a vial of insulin, draws it into a syringe, and then injects that insulin from the vial directly into themselves to either gain attention or to become uh, assume the role of the patient, right? There's some more psychiatric issue at play there. And then lastly, factitious disorder due to the exogenous it, uh, consumption of insulin secretagogues. So this is similar. This is somebody who wants to gain attention or assume the sick role. And instead of injecting themselves with insulin, they'll take something like a sulfonylurea or a GLP-1 analog, etc. So these three things present similarly because they all present with signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. And the test writer wants you to differentiate these based on the labs and occasionally if they're gonna be real jerks based on the risk factors. So let's look at this table. Let's differentiate as you see across the top, insulinoma 
exogenous insulin injections, and exogenous insulin secretagogue administration. So obviously, the first two rows are going to be quite obvious, right? They're all going to present with low blood glucose, aka hypoglycemia, and the insulin levels in all of these are going to be elevated, right? An insulinoma produces insulin that causes blood glucose to drop. If you inject yourself with a, you know, a needle full of insulin that increases your insulin level and causes your blood glucose to drop. And if you consume an insulin secretagogue, that leads to insulin production and causes your blood glucose to drop. So these are obvious and I include them here for completeness sake. When you're taking USMLE and Comlex and you're working through this differential, it's really those last two rows that will help you get the diagnosis. So let's pay attention to C-peptide. In an insulinoma, where there is increased endogenous insulin production, C-peptide will either be increased or normal. This, is, this should make sense to you. We talked about the physiology. If somebody's making insulin, and it doesn't matter if it's from an insulinoma or from their sort of native physiological insulin production, C-peptide will either be normal or increased. On your exam, it'll generally be, generally be increased. If the test writer is a jerk, they'll make it normal. But normal or increased points to something happening endogenously. Now, I want to pause for a second because some of you might be looking at this chart and saying, whoa, 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 you just said that normal or increased C-peptide levels means something is happening endogenously. So how come if somebody gives themselves exogenous secretagogues that C-peptide is normal or increased? And I want to remind you that while somebody intentionally taking something like a sulfonylurea is exogenously you know, taking a pill and swallowing it, that pill stimulates the endogenous production of insulin. And so what you need to remember on your exam is that if somebody is abusing sulfonylureas, maglitinides, DPP-4 inhibitors, those people, yes, they're taking something externally, but the downstream effect of that inside the body is that it stimulates insulin production. And anytime insulin production is stimulated in the body, Yes, C-peptide will get cleaved off. That is an endogenous process due to exogenous pill taking, if you will. So please keep that in mind. That is really, really important. Med students get tripped up on this all the time. They see an increased C-peptide. They immediately assume it's an insulinoma, forgetting, of course, that the insulin secretagogues do stimulate internal endogenous insulin production. And then obviously, as we've touched on, if somebody is injecting themselves with insulin from an insulin vial made by a pharmaceutical company, again, there's no C-peptide in that vial. So C-peptide levels will be decreased. So if you see that decreased C-peptide, I put it in red here because it's so important, that points you in the direction of exogenous insulin injection. Now on your exam, you could be in a situation where you have to differentiate now between an insulinoma and somebody abusing a secretagogue. And if you look at this table, they would present very similarly, right? They would have a low blood glucose. They would have an increased insulin level. They would have a normal or increased C-peptide. And really where they would differ is this last column. So in the case of an insulinoma, if you drew a lab, for example, measuring a serum sulfonyl urea level, if it was an insulinoma, of course, that would be low, right? It would be negative. If it was somebody injecting themselves with insulin, it would be low or it would be negative. However, if it was somebody who was intentionally taking sulfonylureas, a serum sulfonylurea level would in this example be increased. So this last row is where you're going to go if you are differentiating between insulinoma and exogenous insulin secretagogues. And that of course assumes that on the test, they don't push you very strongly into the direction of an insulinoma. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but insulinomas are very high yield and have other very uh, high yield associations with certain pathologies. So this is the chart. You absolutely need to know this. That C-peptide row generally going to be where you do uh, the majority of your damage here and figuring out which answer choice to select. But in the event that you have a normal or increased C-peptide, don't make the mistake of automatically assuming that you're dealing with an insulinoma. Uh, 
the test writer is going to be tricky on purpose and they could have somebody abusing a secretagogue. Now on your exam, the question is, what are the clues going to be that somebody is abusing and injecting insulin or abusing and taking secretagogues? Now, this is my last slide here. This may or may not be helpful to you, but typically the test writer is going to give you somebody who either works in healthcare or has some occupational risk factor that gives them easy access to either insulin or secretagogues. So this could be somebody who cleans a nursing home. This could be a pharmacist. This could be a, a nurse. And typically it's a nurse on the exam. And the reason that it is typically a healthcare worker on your exam is because risk factors include women who have diabetes. And that makes it a little complicated because you're like, wait, they actually have diabetes. They're actually supposed to be taking either insulin or secretagogues, why would I suspect that they're abusing it or using it out of proportion to how it's prescribed? And that's why the test writer is going to be a real jerk and give you all the risk factors, make you think that it's just somebody who had unfortunate side effect to their normal medication, but it turns out they're abusing it or using it because they have factitious disorder. So on your exam, it's gonna be typically a woman aged 30 to 40 with an exposure or occupational risk factor that gives them easy access. Some, sometimes they won't give you this first part, although it tends to show up, and they'll just give you somebody who is actually a real diabetic, which means they have a prescription for insulin or they have a prescription for one of the secretagogues. They're just using it way out of proportion. So I, I, I belabored a lot of points in this video, but I really want to underscore that this is high yield and it, it really is complicated for a lot of students. It doesn't need to be, but just remember that when you see, if we go back to this chart, if you see a C-peptide level that's normal or increased, don't automatically assume insulinoma. Good luck.